Now, fresh off his bye week is our Washington insider, Scott Jackson. Scott, you attended practice this week after their impressive win over Dallas. How much do you think that this bye week might help the team against the Giants Sunday? Well, it should be a good benefit, right? Because they, they got rest. You're about halfway through the season, a little bit less than halfway through the season. They had some injuries, so I think it was a good time to kind of recharge there. You hate it from the fact that they had just won a game against Dallas and there was a lot of emotion and it felt like there was some momentum. So you just hope the time off doesn't hurt them there. And that'll be interesting to watch early in this game. And, you know, it also gives the coaches a chance to kind of self-scout and, and look at themselves and say, All right, what can we be doing different? What can we do to make this team a little bit better? So they spent some time doing that. And obviously it was very good timing for Ron Rivera personally after finishing up those uh, – you know, those uh, radiation treatments and chemo treatments for his cancer. Now, the trade deadline has come and gone, and Coach Rivera didn't seem to have any interest in trades. It seems like he's just using this entire season to evaluate uh, the players that he has for the future. Not very aggressive, in my opinion, if you have hopes of still winning the division. Yeah, but there really wasn't much of a trade market this year. And it wasn't like the, like the need areas for this team are wide receivers certainly could help, you know, offensive line help. You didn't see any real A-list talent players in that area being moved. So I kind of understand where they're coming from. I know some fans are frustrated and thought maybe they could get something for Kerrigan who's in the last year of his deal or something for Dwayne Haskins. But look, there's no market for Dwayne Haskins right now. He's going to have to play himself into a market again or play himself back into the job here eventually. And as far as Kerrigan goes, you know, look, if you're trying to win the division, you want to keep that depth. I mean, Montez Sweat, you know, comes in the week, coming off a concussion. We've already seen a Chase Young injury. So they may need Ryan Kerrigan again uh, to like a higher level of volume in a game or two, or maybe a, a stretch of games before this year is over. So I don't mind them holding on to Ryan. And who knows, you know, maybe, uh, you know, he gets a, a different deal next year and, and he's here to finish off his career. But more than likely, you know, he's probably going to check the free agent market out. And I know he was a little frustrated with his role right now. But it, it'll be interesting to see, you know, how that works out the rest of the season. But I think the trade market was low. Uh, they just didn't see anything. They weren't interested in, in doing a rental either. On offense, Scott, they have to do a better job eliminating turnovers and hitting on more big plays. Yeah, you saw some of those things in the Dallas game. They finally had a couple of big passes over the top, especially the one to McLaurin. But, yeah, you want to see more of the big play. And I think the, the running game and the improved running game can help set up some of those big plays. You know, certainly they got to clean up the turnovers. No question about that. Be better on third down, stay on the field longer. And then, you know, make, make uh, the most of those drives, finish drives, stop missing field goals, uh, you know, get in the red zone and cash in. Those are the things this offense needs to do. And, you know, I think uh, it'll be interesting to see with, with some healthier bodies, uh, you know, if this offense and now with a few weeks into Kyle Allen, if they can kind of ascend a little bit more each week as we move forward here. You know, Scott, Steve Sims is back at wide receiver this week. I love this guy. That should help. But overall, what is the next step for Kyle Allen and this offense? Well, first, we talked about earlier the turnovers. He's got to protect the football first and foremost. Uh, I think, you know, continue to take shots downfield. I'd like to see Kyle Allen run a little bit more. I'd like to see some design runs for him on some of those zone reads. I'd like to see him keep some of those. Uh, it seems like there's some yards to be made as a, in the running game for uh, Kyle Allen. We're going to see Daniel Jones this week, who the Giants always find a way to get out of the edge. Uh, and run. And I think, I think Kyle Allen's a very athletic quarterback, much more athletic than Dwayne Haskins, uh, you know, continue to be good on third down, keep him in third and manageable. And I, I think if he does those kind of things, and again, you know, don't lose the turnover battle. Cause as we saw this past week with games like the Ravens, they put up all those yards, they lose the Steelers because they turn the ball over too much, made stupid penalties, got a player ejected, those kind of things. You got to play smart football. And it usually starts with the turnover ratio. Now with, uh, veteran safety and highly paid Landon Collins out for the season. Terry McLaurin was named a team captain this week. He really is a key member of that team, both on and off the field. Yeah, Terry's been great. I mean, you think about it, that draft, there was so much hype about Haskins and Sweat. And, you know, Terry was the immediate impact player in the third round that year. It took Sweat you know, really until the latter half of the season to show what he's all about. And he's been terrific this year. But but Terry was the star of that draft class from the jump. You know, no matter who the quarterback was last year, whether it was, you know, Keenum, McColt, uh, or when Haskins was on the field, he made plays. And he's been very impressive again this year, just kind of picked up where he left off. You saw the great locker room speech he gave after the win against Dallas. And they love everything Terry McLaurin's about here. And 
he's a hardworking guy and you know he seems to be very grounded with uh where he is in the nfl and he's an ascending talent and i think people are excited to see how high he can uh climb up that wide receiver ladder here in the nfl ah and he is the captain now all right thanks scott we're gonna talk a little later Welcome back, Bruce Rader, with Nathan Epstein, Brian Parsons, Jake Seeley, and Washington insider Scott Jackson. Scott, does a win against the Giants make this a two-way race between Washington and the Eagles for the NFC East title? Sure feels like it. I think, it, you know, look, the, the division's bad right now. I mean, the Eagles are on top with just three wins. You know, Washington could get to three with a win this weekend. So mathematically, everybody's going to be alive for a while, right? But it really will, will be some separation with Washington and Philadelphia if Washington's able to beat the Giants. So the Giants will get the Eagles the following week so they could play themselves right back in it if they were to lose. But, yeah, I think we'd see it that way. I'm totally discounting Dallas. I know it. They're a mess. We've seen they, they really have no quarterback play right now. So, yeah, I feel like if Washington can win this game and they've got, again, some winnable games we've talked about in the past here coming up on the schedule, uh, you know, they, they could definitely get on a roll here and play themselves towards the top half of that division and make that final game of the season against the Eagles in Week 17, maybe a winner-take-all situation. Boy, wouldn't that be exciting. Now, on paper, this looks like a winnable game Sunday, but the Giants won a couple of weeks ago. Is this Washington team that much better right now? Well, it's hard to say just a few weeks ago, but boy, they were awful close in that game. We talked about turnovers earlier in the show, and that was a big problem in that game for Kyle Allen. The two big turnovers were really the difference in the game. Obviously, Ron Rivera's decision not to kick the extra point is what people have really talked about since that game. Yeah, I, I think this is one they've been circled on the calendar since they left, you know, uh, the Giants game, you know, two weeks, three weeks ago now. I mean, they're, they're going to be excited to play this team again because they felt like they let that one get away. That game and I think the Browns game are the two games that really eat at this uh, staff and this play and, the, and these players. They really feel like those are the two games they should have won this year. So, yeah, I, I think they can beat them, but they got to play clean football, Bruce. And the Giants are competitive every week. Outside of one game this year, I think the 49ers game, but they got blown out. They've been in every game. They were tough against Tampa on Monday night, had a chance to win. So it's not going to be easy. So Washington's got to play smart football at home. And, Scott, one more question. They're going to allow, what, 3,000 fans to watch the game on Sunday. Do you think that's going to make any difference at all? Well, I tell you what, after going from empty to, like, friends and family of, like, 50 or whatever the number is to a 3,000, it's probably going to feel pretty pretty big for the players and for this coaching staff to have that. They've talked about it this week. I think they're excited to see it. And it's a great deal for those fans. There's no, you know, the parking's free, and there's a lot of good benefits to being in a stadium that empty.